Uh, I'd like to call to order the Muskegon County Board of Commissioners Ways and Means Committee of October 19th, 2021, and it is 3.01 p.m. Um, please speak into your microphones, commissioners, so that everyone out in the audience can hear. Thank you. Um, can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Here. Commissioner Hughes? Here. Commissioner Laring? Here. Commissioner Nash? Here. Commissioner Pago? Here. Chair Skolnick? Here. Commissioner Wilkins? Here. Commissioner Sear? Here. Lang present. Uh, at this time, I'd also like to have uh, Commissioner Wilkins open with a short invitation. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you for all the things that you have done for us. And we thank you as we go through this pandemic that you have blessed us to even be here. And I ask you to give us the direction on everything that we pass today and so that we can help the people of the speaking time. We want to bless them, Lord, and we thank you for what you have done for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Wilkins. Uh, I number three, approval of the minutes of October 5th, 2021. So support. I have a motion in support. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Passes. Uh, the next item on the agenda is public comment on an agenda item. Uh, all public comment should be on an agenda item and limited to two minutes in length. Nobody online. Yeah, online. Anybody in the crowd? Hearing none. Uh, going to items for consideration: WM twenty one slash ten dash one one zero to approve payment of the accounts payable of eighteen million five hundred seventy thousand six hundred thirty three dollars and forty one cents. Covering a period from September 24th, 2021 through October 7th, 2021, for checks as presented by the county clerk. Support. I have a motion in support. Uh, any questions, comments, or concerns on this item? Sure, I'll be right. Just a comment. Um, I was kind of amazed at the amount of $14 million for education uh, from mobile home tax, which I had no idea it would be that much. That's good. Any other questions, comments? Uh, seeing none, uh, let's have a roll call, please. Commissioner Hughes? <clears throat> yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? No. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Eight yes, one no. Thank you. That item passes. The next item is WM21-10-111 to adopt the 2021 apportionment report as prepared and submitted by the Muskegon County Equalization Department. So support. I have a motion to support. Questions, comments, or concerns on this item? Very complete report. Okay, seeing none, um, uh, voice vote, all approve, or all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That item passes. The next item, WM21-10-112, to authorize staff to issue a request for qualifications for a consultant to administer the tracking, reporting, and compliance with the American Rescue Plan grant dollars. So moved. Second. I have a motion in support, questions, comments, or concerns on this item. I do have one question on that. Yes, Commissioner Hughes. In the last line says, uh, minister the tracking, reporting, and compliance with the American Plan Rescue Dollars. Is it, we're going to use the rescue dollars to pay for this, or is it to administer the rescue plan dollars? Uh, thank you. Yes, you can use the American Rescue Funds to pay for this. But the consultant is actually to, to help us with that, correct? They're helping us. Uh, I think number three spells it the best. Um, assisting the county organization, reviewing, evaluating, auditing the eligibility. That's the okay. critical point. But I don't want to do it. Okay, so we're going to use rescue plan dollars to, to purchase this thing to help us with it. Right. Okay. Right. I, I just, I, I'm kind okay. of confusing that. Got it. Thank yeah. you. That's it. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Commissioner Nash, go ahead. I just wanted to. This is new. This is not something we 
had to record and track before. So what are we looking for with these qualifications so that we can properly, you know, what we're looking for is someone who is knows more about this than we do already. So we just learned about in the last six months, and we, we talked to a couple of firms already that they're behind the eight ball. They, they don't know where uh, actually the answers are yet, but there are firms that Mac is actually recommending that have started this already. So we'll take a look at those plus anybody else who puts a submittal to it. But we're looking for someone who. Been tracking this from the very start. Yeah, we yeah, might want to check with NACO too. Yes, we did. Yeah, NACO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Now I have a question too. Uh, yes, Commissioner. Mark, ahead. are you going to bring this back to us or do we want to just. We'll, we'll bring it back. You're going to bring it back. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm like, this is so new. There's not anybody that's the expertise in it because it is so new. Right. So anybody is going to have to do research to make sure that there's compliance with all of this. This was one of the reasons why I voted no for this back earlier in the year for the all of the funding that is required with this. Um, I'm going to vote no for a lot of reasons, but what kind of money are you talking about allocating to pay somebody for this? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to determine. We, we learned different amounts at, at those properties that we attended. Uh, the one, the highest one I've seen so far is 10% of what you, what you were oh, awarded. Good. Yeah, so that's, I mean, what, what that oh, county is doing is turning over everything. Right now, uh, Angie and Matt and other directors are helping out. Um, but our intention is not to turn it all over and say, here you go. Um, our, when we have questions, we ask them, is there really a fee a retainer more so than taking over the pie? Okay, so so this person will work with the department right. and so forth. And he, just said, to try he just said that they I, I have a comment too. Uh, yes. And I have seen a lot of people that have expertise in that advertising um, through NACO, through Mac, through different things um, in our emails and stuff. So I know there's a lot of people out there that are specializing in that now. Because let's face it, it's a brand new growing field. Yeah. But I, I imagine there's somebody that's been studying this thing since the oh, day yeah, they said it was an hour and they, they probably have a lot better. That's why I asked back in like February, March when this first came out for copies of all of the um, guidelines and everything, you know, all of the details with it. And then finally, I think about a month ago, almost, I got that stack, you know, put on my desk here. Exactly. I mean, it's through a few pages, but- Careful what you ask for. Well, exactly. Careful, careful accepting all this money because of what trouble our grandkids and great-grandkids might get into later if we're not compliant. My whole point. Commissioner Nash. No, I was just gonna say, we have to remember this pandemic has been going on for a long period of time and the, the companies or consultants that's been out there have been doing this for a while. This is not the first set of money that's been coming out that had to be managed or reported for. So this has already been going on for you know whatever a year or two now. So we can find somebody that may have experience, and that's why I like to be at the you know check them and make them with Mac because they're definitely going to know and have the uh, uh, data to to know who's you know out there working in it and doing a good job. And this is like having a uh, uh, a CPA doing your taxes, you know, and a lot of that is going to be, you know, their responsibility because we're going to be using them as a consultant for this, the expert for it. So it's just like when I found my taxes, I don't worry about it. And even if I get on it, they have to deal with it. I don't have to deal with it. Any other comments, questions? Uh, yes, Chair Skolnick. Um, just in uh, response to um, Commissioner Piglow's comment. Um, I would assume that if we hire a consultant, they will provide as part of their uh, packet some kind of insurance um, if there's some kind of error that's their fault. Um, yeah, right. And, that and so far back by the federal government. I, that seems like that would be. Right. I think that's the biggest concern of most of the counties is what I'm hearing is they spend money and then five years down the road, the federal come back and says, hey, you didn't we, want follow us. we want the money back. So that's a concern for many counties. So we'll make sure how Matt has handled that question. Okay. Any other comments? 
Hearing none, we'll do a voice vote. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, no. no. Item passes. The next item is WM21 slash 10 113 to approve an increase to the purchase order 2118583 with DLZ by an amount not to exceed $65,000 for a facility condition assessment of 1903 Marquette Avenue. Authorize the chair to sign the contract amendment and amend the budget accordingly. So support. A motion and support, con uh, comments, questions, concerns. Uh, Commissioner Bagel, please. Where's the funds? It's non budgeted. It says right in there. Yeah, I just want it said on record. Can I, uh, Commissioner, can uh, I get an explanation? Yeah, I, can I get my answer question? Yeah, the answer ideally could be. Uh, the money could come from the American Rescue Plan. Could that's what I wanted to say locally. Thank you. Oh. Um, so I'm just asking for an explanation. Yeah, that, that uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Farrell, would you please. An explanation of this entire project, Commissioner. <laughs> yeah, I'm not familiar with this project and the firm DLV. Yeah. Um, well, as you know, we did a, a request for qualifications to do a facilities condition assessment on our existing buildings. So the first phase, as we, as the administrator reported to you, in the due diligence process of, of purchasing the facility at Angel Three Baker, um, the first step is to do a facilities condition assessment from there. Mm -hmm. And since this is identical work to what they did here, uh, per our policy and federal guidelines, we can just extend that existing uh, contract with DLC to perform those services. And once that study comes back, we'll present it to you. It'll tell you what's wrong with the building, if anything, and then you make the decision to continue or to step or just or one step at a time. So this is the first step there. Mm -hmm. And yes, um, accounting did come up with some ways we could cut spending on South Campus and allocate those funds towards this. Thank you. Any other questions? Michelle, we right? Go ahead. Yeah, wouldn't we be saving all of the expenses for rent up for uh across the street? Oh, absolutely it would. Well, I, I, I probably wasn't very clear. Right now we have $140,000 budgeted for work on South Campus for this year. Mm -hmm. We're proposing to cut that and allocate 65,000 of that towards this project, this facilities condition assessment. Okay, so we're not touching the other. We haven't eliminated the you, other. You can if you choose down the road. Yeah, but, okay. But okay. for now, we're just showing in this particular case, we can cut the existing uh, appropriation to cover it. Would this include an estimate of how much it would cost if there's things that need to be repaired or yes. fixed? Yes. Okay, so that'll be included. Okay, now the other uh, question is not really about this item, but like the next step. And that is, uh, when will we see the cost of renovating to our needs um that'll be the next step they will do uh, operational cost analysis and i wouldn't say renovate but uh, reconfiguration Re analysis right okay. which will show which departments will go where and what the cost if anything to the temporary retrofit or whatever. Retrofit. Reconfigure. and will that be at COVID money as well it, c it can be yes we feel that it can be when will we find out that amount? Once the study's done. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's just one step at a time. We know we plan on getting this done in two months. So we'll come back to you if you decide to continue. We'll have another proposal uh, to, to take another step. We just don't want to do everything at once in case any one factor is too expensive and, and the commission decides to, to stop the process. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Chair. The agreement we signed um, was for a year, maximum of a year. Yes, we have one year ahead. So we, this isn't going to happen in a week or two. It's going to take a while. This first step will take a couple months. And then the re reconfiguring, they're going to have to meet the, the departments. Yes. And look at it. So it's going to take some time. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Please, Commissioner Pago. Yes, Chair Skolnick. 
Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Nine yes. I guess that item passes. We'll go on to the next item, which is WM21 slash 10 114 to authorize the staff to issue a request for qualifications for professional services for the remodel of the sixth floor and replacement of the curtain wall at the Hall of Justice. So moved. Support. Sorry, that's 113. Pardon me. One. No, I'm staying corrected. Thank you. Any uh, questions, comments, or concerns? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, uh, <coughs> shall we read? Yeah, um, the 11.5 million compared to for remodeling the sixth floor <coughs> and new skin and the fourth floor, we're talking about 8.5 million to buy the whole Baker College. That 11 million sounds really high. So, okay, so um, the Hall of Justice isn't going anywhere because it's attached to the jail and we just built the jail. So these, they're kind of two separate things. The, the proposal on Marquette is simply to replace, to move administration and all this. No, I, I know all that. I'm just talking about the cost. Oh, sure. You know, 11.5 million to renovate this building and 8.5 to buy the whole college. It's good deal. It just <laughs> well, does that sound weird to anybody else? Yeah. No, it does not. No, that's too much. That's what, now you're going to explain a little bit of the breakdown. We also, by that, we're including the windows being replaced, the skin the being skin replaced. Out of the building. And that, that, that's, yeah, a that's a big four million dollar. Is that all the IT and technological court that's system? No, that's no. no. So the IT or the court. The court. The court. The that would include the IT stuff on the sixth floor. Yeah. Right. It does. Well, it's like a million. We have to remember, number one, that we're getting a, a really good deal with the college. Really good deal with the right. college. And we also have to remember that construction costs has gone up enormously with all kinds of products because of the pandemics and shipping and things we can and cannot get. So that does not sound too much. We just, what we do, we did 10 million in uh, uh, with the Honeywell some time ago, and that was just on envelope uh, studies. Yeah. yeah, so. That was what? They call it envelope studies, anything inside the building. Oh. It was uh, energy efficiency, and, and we just worked on those kind of things, but that didn't include any reconstruction, six floor, skins, and that stuff. Oh. So, you know, with the with the price and the time and, and what we spent back then, it's, that's probably okay, okay for right now. A little out of whack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Commissioner Larry? Yeah, I just wanted to remind the commissioners that some of these discussions were closed session conversations and probably dollars shouldn't be mentioned here for some of this stuff. So thank you, Mr. Larry. Commissioner Hughes? Yeah, my, um, my concern was even having the cost in there because this is just a request for qualifications. Not a bid. We're not asking for a bid on doing it. Are we? We're just asking no, for people just, who are qualified to do it. Right. That's all we're doing is searching for a firm. If, if one is chosen, we'll bring that firm to you for consideration up or down. Um, you know, I put it there just so you get an okay. idea. I of appreciate all what, of the extra details. But it just it confused so many people. Uh, I, ju I just want to mention we've, how many floors have we remodeled in the last 10 or 12 years? They're all five. Yeah. And they were expensive too. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't, mm -hmm. this doesn't surprise me. Right. Um, I think the last floor, I know they kept, uh, they, they found asbestos after they got into it. And yeah. uh, I think, wasn't it about six million just for that one floor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I, I don't remember. It wasn't, it wasn't cheap. It's gone up every floor. Any other questions, <laughs> comments? Okay. Will this include a gremlin abatement? Gremlin. Yes. <laughs> Can someone explain what that is? <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, let's uh, have a uh, voice vote on this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That item passes.
Next item, WM21-10-115 to authorize staff to continue administering the DTE test and tune-up program through December 31st, 2023, utilizing approved contracts. So support, yeah. I have a motion to support on this item. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns on this item? Great program. Commissioner Pago, please. Yeah, I just, um, since this is coming from the Veterans Department, is this program strictly for veterans then? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. No. Uh, Mike Farrell with the School County Veterans. No, it is not just for veterans. It's, it is specifically for uh, DTE approved consumers in our community that meet the threshold of the income. Why does veterans set that up just um, because right before, before I was here? Prior, so I prior, to, me, prior to me to be, being new to the Veterans Department, I was here as a grants coordinator and I brought that on in 2012. And it's just stuck. Okay. So you're just still administrating yeah. it? Still administrating it. happen yes. to be at Veterans now? Right. We're still doing that in addition okay. to the Veterans work. Okay. Um, because it is coming from the Veterans Department, I'm just curious what percentage of Veterans receive this service? Um, as, uh, many, as many are eligible by DT and Consumers Energy for their... Is this I, something that affects our Veterans? Um, because it's coming through the veterans, I assume it would be specific to the veterans. So forgive me for not understanding. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> but I, uh, out of those homes, you, you don't know how many are veterans? I don't know how many of those are veterans okay. in specific. Okay. Um, but it's, it's two separate the veterans programs that we manage are completely separate than sure. this. Uh, there are veterans that do receive the benefits okay. um, from, the, from the DT, but it's all based on DT's um, approval. So for Sure, I understand that. I was just curious if you knew about you know, how many veterans are actually I, received. We haven't really tracked that. What we, what we did track is the, the money brought in and the money that went out. Okay. So that we know that there's a So a is there special, because you are from the Veterans Department, is there special information that you provide the veterans of the county with this program avail availability to them? We have not, uh, only because in year one, so 2012, 2013, um, it was really, we had to go out and market it for DTE. And now it's all word of mouth and contractors. I don't have to, I can answer 100 phone calls a day to people calling into that program. What it does do, the way it, what it does do that helps the veteran community though, is that the my wages and fringes, 50% of those come from the DTE administration portion of it. So that's extra money that we've been putting into our fund equity to assist veterans with their benefits, whatever that benefit money might need to be. Is it something you're opposed to doing, to getting this information, this program available to the veterans, or could no, you work on that? I'm definitely not opposed to it. Okay. I know that all of our veterans organizations know that it's there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Bowdoin, said uh, qualifications, are they mainly financial? Or has it got anything to do with ages and seniors, or, or, or what's the main it is. It is household income to uh, household population and whether they are a DTE consumer. So if you are a pellet stove eating person and you don't have a DTE account, then the answer is no. Okay, I see. And if you are a household of five and you make $10 million a year, the answer is no. Yeah. Cheers, Colin, please. Well, I, maybe I'm mistaken, but I think this isn't a program that's everywhere. Um, I think we got lucky with this because of your taking this over in the beginning. We, we are the... There are three municipalities in, in this area that do this. Our, we do it for the county. The city of Muskegon and the city of Muskegon Heights both get a small stipend for DTE to do this. Very small, probably maybe 10% of what we do, maybe. Uh, the, the bulk of this work is on the east side of the state. Correction, the bulk, the bulk of the contractors or the, the, the administrators on the east side of the state. However, for the gas, pot, for the gas uh, program, the gas measures program, we have probably account for 85% of the DTE spend right here out of this office. This is a huge group. Yeah, this group mm -hmm. really is. yeah we're very lucky. Because you're huge. And I'd just like to say thank you to Mike because I remember for the first couple of years, we only have one or two heating companies involved. And now I see a, a heating companies I never heard of, and I've heard a lot of them. There's a lot. There's I, was, I was amazed how many you have on there. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of the heating companies know about the program and they will help their people get signed up for it when they find out it's there. So that's a big help too. Thank you. And Commissioner Pago, one of the things that I do ask our contractors to do, we have our brochures that we hand out with our, what benefits, what programs we offer out of our office. 
So if they do go to a building or home that it does have a veteran population inside of it, they will leave those brochures behind. So at least they're getting the benefits. Okay, thank you. Mr. 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 Chair, I just Chair. like to make one other comment. A couple of years ago, um, it, it just this was sort of, um, I'm not, I can't explain how it happened, but I met, I met somebody who um, owned a home, but they really were financially not, they were in good shape. And their furnace had gone out and uh, they were heating their house and they had children. They were heating their house with a couple of space heaters, yeah. electric space heaters. And it, it was, you know, really shouldn't, and it was cold. And I referred them to Mike and they ended up getting a furnace that week. <clears throat> you know how that happened, and they were just, I mean, this was like a miracle. Mm -hmm. So, it's a good program. Yeah, yeah it's a great program. Okay, hey, thank you, Mr. Bell. We appreciate that. All right, I'd like to have a voice vote on this. All in favor of this, say aye. 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 All opposed? That item passes. Next item on the agenda is unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? Seeing none, uh, next item is new business. Is there any new business? I do have some new business. Commissioner Hughes, go ahead. I, I'd like to make a motion to postpone the return of the police vehicles for 60 days to allow our local law enforcement communities to voice their opinions and possible options for the vehicles. So for which vehicles are you talking about? The two that we're going to return. Okay. And we have, a, we have support. So I, I do have a comment on that if I could. Mr. Chair. The reason for this is I was contacted by numerous police departments who said, you know, we would be interested in taking over some of those vehicles or helping store some of those vehicles. And we hadn't reached out to them before. And I think we owe them that to reach out to them. And I'd also like for you guys to hear what I heard from my police chief and the North Shores police chief about what those vehicles do, because this, this sounds bad, but the sheriff did a really poor job explaining what those vehicles do. And when when the Norton Shores police officer and I known each other for way too many years, and he explained it that these vehicles will take officers into a situation that's hostile, like somebody had taken over a school or a church, and they can drive right up and they can separate the people from the people who are trying to take it over, and they can put people in there and back them out of there. And, take the people out of harm's way. They're not gonna bust in with a cannon. That's not, they don't even have weapons on the outside. And that was the impression that I got from the sheriff was that this was a tank type thing. And that's not at all what it is. We need a picture. And be before, we, before we make a decision like that, if we have some local municipalities that are interested in taking that over and taking over that program, I think that they have, should have an opportunity. Because just because the sheriff did a poor job explaining to us what it was about, I don't think we should put this thing. Commissioner Larry, please. So an MRAP is a mine resistant vehicle. I don't know. I've seen in the newspapers the last time a mine resistant vehicle was needed in Muskegon County. They call it not a tank. It's not tracked, but it is wheeled. It is armored. It can be equipped uh, with armory. Uh, with weapons, um, the county does not need a armored mine resistant vehicle in this county. Um, the idea of backing somebody out of a situation, we've had armored vehicles in the county since the early 2000. They've never been used in the county. They're just parade vehicles. Uh, for a show of a macho show of use of force. Our sheriff's department, it's not a mandated service that they have to provide. Uh, this is costing the county a fortune to store. Uh, the sheriff put together a three million, three point something million dollar building to store this stuff. We don't have the space to store it. He doesn't have the budget to store it. We don't have the budget to maintain it. The, all of this equipment that came back or that we left in Afghanistan is a joke because it requires my military experience. I know the maintenance that this equipment, that the Afghans, this equipment will be useless in yes, less than a year because they don't have the parts, the capability, the knowledge to maintain it. This stuff has been setting in storage. The previous sheriff's administration got rid of an MRAP and an armored uh, uh, APC, 
that wasn't used to take, it took a semi truck to just drive the thing around <laughs> town. There is no need for that equipment in Muskegon County. And we are already reaching out to local municipalities, every government agency we're reaching out to to see if they want it. There, it, It's available to every governmental agency in the county, the state and the nation. We're actively reaching out to see if any municipalities wants this stuff. If there are, they can have it, they can store it, they can maintain it. This equipment doesn't get, it's just a vehicle to drive around the parade and, and have a macho man fest. We do not need that show of force in this peaceful county. Uh, Commissioner Hughes, uh, we're having a discussion on a motion. Did anybody support this motion? Bob, yeah. did. Okay. Do you want to rescind your right, motion? Commissioner Hughes, go ahead. Uh, the, and, and basically, I agree with Zach. We don't need a tank, we don't need, but I did I did talk to way too many local police that said if we'd known you needed space to store it, we'd have stored it. If we if we already have teams that have been training for the last two years to man this vehicle and run this vehicle and do things that you know if we should need it. And I they made me feel like we didn't do due diligence. So I'd like to give them 60 days to do due diligence. And then if we want, if they can't store it, they can't may handle it, they then I say I'm all for getting rid of it. Yeah. I, and I will I will withdraw my motion in, in 60 days if we don't have some response from those people that is positive for that. Because because I agree with Zach. So far it's been nothing for us but great. But I did have some really good response from a couple of different sheriffs in, in cities and townships and I feel like I owe them the opportunity to have a voice. Mr. Brown. Uh, when you had this discussion, do you know, I would assume, you know, we've been talking about storage for a while, is there, I would assume they have to be trained and certified for running? And vehicles? most of them already have at least two officers that have already completed or so, in the process of completing that training. Muskegon Township has two, and Norton Shores has three or four that have already completed the training for that and can drive it and man it. Least, that's what I was told. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think it's a valid thing to to delay this sixty days. I, I don't see the rush, um, and I uh, I agree with uh, Zach that you know um, if that's I'd like to see pictures of these vehicles, <laughs> but uh, if another use can be found for them, and we don't um, anyway, there's no rush. What's your name? You know I I disagree with Commissioner Laren because this is this is not a tank. This is an armored vehicle to help protect law enforcement officers. This has not cost us a fortune. It has cost us really nothing to store it. We're just starting to talk about paying for it. So it's not been a fortune. You know, I just think sometimes we make statements up here that are just overblown. Um, this is not something that they run into the parade all the time. This is a vehicle that they could use. Hopefully, God sparing, we don't need it. But it would be terrible to have a situation where we do need it and we don't have it. I remember when Grand Rapids first used theirs and it hadn't been used, but they came into a situation where they had to use that tank to be able to handle the situation that they were trying to handle. So we don't know. We hope we keep peace in this, but it's better to have something, be prepared than to not be prepared because you know, like I say, we're talking about officers, we're talking about other families, we're talking about victims, anyone. And and we're not law enforcement. So, you know, without having law enforcement experience, we don't understand everything that goes into what they have to do to try to protect us. And uh, I haven't personally had it, but I know family members who've been law enforcement members. And, and that's a tough job and it's a stressful job. And a lot of them go dedicated to their job to try to help protect us in this thing. And it's better for them to be prepared than to be unprepared. And I just think the 60 days is more reasonable. I think a lot of this we're pushing, you know, for whatever reason, it's just a little too fast to just, you know, make these quick changes. But I think that's reasonable. At least we can figure out something with one of the other law enforcement organizations or, or whoever wants to try to help us uh, retain these vehicles for the community, not just for the county. Mr. Chair. 
Mr. I'd like to ask the administration a question. Is this vehicle currently available to local municipalities who might want it? Yes, as I directed to the board, the board directed me at least, we contacted LESO, which is the Law Enforcement Support Office, uh, representing the state, and the state represents the federal government. Um, it has to go through their office for approval, and they're the ones that find somebody. So they're once they are notified, then they begin this process of looking for other municipalities. So any one of these municipalities that are requesting this vehicle could, if they're approved to have such a vehicle, could take possession of it. They have to be an LEA certified by the state. They would qualify to be able to take the equipment. So any qualified municipality in the state of Michigan or in the Midwest could receive this vehicle. So if they're qualified, could receive this vehicle, all they have to do is contact them. So if these local municipalities want it, let them contact. They're actually reaching it. They're, if I understand this process, I did my due diligence on this process. If these local municipalities, they don't have to reach out to them. They're being reached out to. If they're interested in, in a mine resistant vehicle, they can have it in two weeks. So the process, it, it just because we want to get rid of it, it's if I have uh, hazardous waste I got to get rid of, there's a process to get rid of it. I can't just dump it out on the street, nor can we just dump out on the street a mine resistant vehicle to a local militia. This has to go to a municipality. They have to be certified. And driving these vehicles, which I have licenses for multiple military vehicles, is not the issue. Once they're used and you're driving them, it's actually maintaining them. And the fuel that's used, it's special fuel that's used through these pieces of equipment. You just can't go to Speedway and fill up your tank. It's incredibly expensive to operate and maintain. When I say operate, it's not driving. Anybody with a driver's license could learn to drive most of this equipment in a day. It's keeping it out of somebody's basement is the big challenge to it because of the weight of these vehicles. If they, if they try to use this to back into somebody's house, they're gonna wind up in their basement because the houses can't support the weight. They're incredibly um, cumbersome equipment that's not designed for war theater operations. They are not designed for urban situations here in Muskegon County. I, I strongly disagree with postponing this because it doesn't do anything. These municipalities already have access to this. If they're qualified to own it, let them take it on. We don't have the resources to maintain it or store it. Cheers, Colton. Um, just a, a couple of things. Um, one is <clears throat> that MRAP is much bigger than the Humvee. And it, it holds, like if you want to transport people to get closer to whatever you're trying to protect, the Humvee only holds, I think, three people, passengers. The, um, the MRAP is, can hold six to eight people. And um, that's, some, that's number one. Number two, we've had some type of a vehicle like this for probably at least 20 years. I, I don't know. I mean, we had that armored personnel carrier for a long time. And, you know, I don't know about special fuel. I suspect they just use diesel fuel. I don't know that for a fact, but I think that's it. Um, I got this, it's not very long. I got this email from uh, the uh, police chief in Northern Shores and he's highly respected. He's been there for a long time and he, he's got all the training anybody could have. He sent me this. I wanted to take time this morning to thank those of you for voting to protect our law enforcement officers. I listened to the county board meeting on Tuesday, October 12th. I was completely surprised and shocked that a motion was brought to the table affecting Muskegon County law enforcement without a chance to voice our opinions. This decision affects not only the sheriff's office, but all law enforcement. These vehicles were secured to transport safely law enforcement officers from all agencies into a potential hot zone where there could be gunfire. They are not assault vehicles. The vehicles do not have guns mounted on them. They are simply a personnel carrier that provides protection. I would hope in the future that our commissioners reach out to their law enforcement leaders 
when making critical decisions such as this one to get advice. Um, it appears that some of our commissioners feel they know more about protecting our law enforcement officers than the police chiefs they represent. Thank you. Uh, thanks again for voting to protect our officers. I am proud to know that it's about me. But uh, I, we need to, we need to re look at this before we jump into this decision. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess I don't want to take up a lot of time, but I would like to. Yes. And you know, one of the officers sent me this. During the past 15 years, the sheriff's office has had at least one armored vehicle. During eight of the 13 years, they had two from 2007 to 2015. We received 54 emergency response teams called calls of service, and that's the team that runs these vehicles. That equated to an average of six calls per year, with the most we received in one year being 11. The least was four. The team did not respond to eight additional calls that did not meet our threshold. Of the 46 <coughs> calls responded to, an armored vehicle was deployed nine times. If, if the emergency response team was operational, we would have responded was operational today because they still have 11 people. They have two weeks left to graduate. If the ER team was in operation today, we would have responded to three calls in the past two months. We hope that the team will be fully operational within the next two weeks. We will need to call, then we will need to call no other counties for assistance in using armored vehicles since the officers will not have to have this protection from outside the county. So that's what made me think, maybe, I'm not saying we made the wrong decision, I'm saying I'd like to give the police officers who deal with that every single day outside of the sheriff's office to talk to us. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I would, that. The letter and what Susan's saying is also another point. We have to remember that the, the, it's not just the sheriff department involved with this. It's other law enforcement agencies that work together in collaboration when these types of situations come up. So. This, this is not just about us. It's about the other law enforcement that work together as teams. And, you know, we're impacting everyone in that. And so, Mr. Chair, I go ahead again. I'm sure. So, a, a year and a half ago ish, when the sheriff requested the Humvee, uh, I voted no on that issue too. He testified in front of those of you that were here that this ERT team and the armored vehicles had been deployed once. I, there's multiple responses for ERT. I don't know what these 46 responses are, but he testified that this armored equipment had been deployed once in the entire time from 2002 to 2012 and had been used once. And it was an assist in the Wago County. So, it hadn't been used in that 10 year process. Sheriff Rossler, the previous administration, liquidated all of this equipment at, because it hadn't been used. And that was his statement. And it's in the paper today. You're shaking your head, but you can still look it up today. He said the equipment hadn't been used. So he was getting rid of the, the equipment. So uh, that's my point. It, it, Sheriff Poulin said it had been used once in an assist in Oago County, and we still gave him a Humvee, uh, and it hasn't been used since then that he's had this Humvee. My belief is it's time to get rid of this stuff. Yeah, I just want to reiterate what Mark said is that the LESO are the proper avenues and channels for reallocating this equipment. Us commissioners and each municipality can't just you know, tell us what they want us to do. It's already been handled through the administration through the proper channels. The Department of Defense oversees the LESO and that's the proper channels that they, they will be notified or they can notify the LESO from here on out. The Board of Commissioners doesn't need to be involved with this any further. Yeah, the, re the reason that I thought we should be involved in this is because if one of the other municipalities is willing to house it, and we can't make that decision though, the LESO has to, they so can, out of they our can, hands. They don't get to decide where we house it. They just get to decide who owns it. But the county could house it somewhere else and not have the responsibility of it, not have to pay the rent on it. If one of our municipalities would be willing to take it and house it for us, we wouldn't have to worry about that. I don't think contractually we would actually be able to do that. If I'd like to find that out. That's why I brought this. I, don't, I think we made a decision without all the facts. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought it was incorrect. 
Well, the I'm not saying I wouldn't okay. happily withdraw it if we find out, you know, but I think we, I think that residents <coughs> and the other police officers in town should have the opportunity to talk to us. I think we did this hastily. And I agree with that. It's been my impression that these have been great vehicles, but that was not the impression I got when I got done listening to the letters I received from the local police. Anybody else? All right, so please restate the motion for us. Oh, uh, yes, I will. Oh, I didn't get it all. I'm okay. sorry. The motion is to postpone the return of the police vehicles for 60 days to allow our local law enforcement communities to voice their opinions and the possible options for the vehicles. So are you saying that we would bring the the, the local uh, I think law enforcement people in here to talk with us? Is that what you're asking? I, I, to do I, had, I asked 30 of them not to show up today. Hmm. 30? Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's have a roll call vote. Commissioner Bram? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Larry? No. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? No. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Sears? Yes. Seven yes, two no. All right, and passes. Do we have any other new business today? Any business? Hearing none, public comment. I don't see any. Don't see any online. Crowd. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy Moore, Public Health Director. Um, I was going to say there were two public first. Um, very two brief updates. One on lean government. So lean government process is underway in the uh, public health department. The consultant was here at the beginning of our fiscal year uh, for two days. He met on Monday, October 4th with uh, individuals from our different programs to discuss the current processes and try to identify potential lean projects. And then on Tuesday, October 5th, he uh, conducted lean training with a group of 15 of our staff and uh, thank you, uh, Human Resource Director Kristen Wade joined us, um, especially you know thinking that there may be some HR related projects. So thank her for that time. Um, he, there, the next step. Oh, then after I met with him individually, um, we sort of reviewed all of the suggestions and we um, chose enhanced customer service and support as our project. And the next step is he will be here at the end of this month, October 26th, um, and he will meet with a team he labeled the value stream mapping team. Um, then he'll also return in November um, and they'll start looking at improvement and processes then again in December. And then we plan to report back to this committee in February. Uh, some of the um, some of the highlights of areas of improvement included uh, broken or old processes and forms, um, using tools that don't connect or span across the department, so they're they're working in silos. Um, accountability measures uh, aren't aren't in place, and it's not it's not that it's bad staff. We just need to track it better and, and hold them accountable. And then updated training and certification. So in the year 2000, when our dollars were, um, and we had some budget issues, one of the first things that went was our training. And we all could use um, updated increased training. The, the world has changed, and we haven't changed um, as much to go with it. So thank you for that opportunity. Uh, the other quick update is on the uh, senior millage for municipalities. Uh, we have a draft that um, for the fiscal year 22, we did have a call from a representative from Moreland Township. She felt that uh, the numbers, the census numbers for seniors we were using were um, outdated. She, she said she was very confident that they had more seniors and um, rightfully so we were using 
uh, U.S. Census Bureau numbers from 2017. We did uh, contact the uh, county clerk's office and we have some tentative numbers. They're not final numbers. And um, it, does, it does make a difference. Um, so next month, I hope to bring, well, I will bring to Human Services um, a proposal to hold some of the municipalities that would lose funding to hold them harmless. It's, it's going to be less than $10,000, and there is $10,000 um, left over from the municipal funding from this fiscal year. So it's not it's not going into the grant dollars, and it's not costing the county any money. Um, it's just that we had informed those 28 municipalities that the funding would be similar to last year. And if we apply these new um, census, estimated census numbers, there are some losers, but if we could hold them harmless for this year, and then at least we, we give them advance notice um, in fiscal year 23 that that number might change. And that's my update. And we'll have more details um, at the human services. Yes. Yes. Uh, could you remind us what lean stands for? I know there's two different. So our lean, lean government is a process similar to Six Sigma. Six Sigma has more of the uh, quantitative and qualitative. Lean government actually looks at um, our government processes and they're looking for areas of waste. And um, we found seven areas of waste mm -hmm. and not, of course, not intentional. Um, and lean government focuses more on the customer, the output to the customer. And um, like Six Sigma would focus more on internal processes, but it is just, look, it's, it's just a proven uh, research-based process to uh, look at governmental operations and uh, cut some of that out. There you go. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. It's uh, uh, not only uh, looking for inefficiencies, but redundancies. Uh, there's a thing called mission creep a lot of times that happens mm -hmm. in an organization where uh, if you really take a hard look at it, you find that there's three different uh, areas that are doing the same thing, which is kind of necessary. That's one of the things that uh, we hope to go eliminate too uh, by this process. So, is there, uh, any other? Go ahead. Go ahead. So, would mission creep? Would that be an ERT team and SWAT combining services? Would that be included in your mission brief? No, 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 that's not the same. No, if we had three or four of around the county, that might be considered mission brief. Oh, that. but we can have two, but not three or four. Any other public comment at this time? Hearing none, any final board comment? Yes, I sure, I, I, this. You know, I'm not looking to debate this, but um, those of you who remember uh, some time ago when uh, Al, Mr. Jagger was the uh, supervisor of Fulton County, and uh, he insisted on taking all the time he needed to speak. Plus, um, um, we received a letter from the work commission about a week ago. I just want to say something about that. And the total expenditures there, including local road money, primary road money, some population-based money from the Act 51 dollars, which are the road tax, over those five years, totaled four million two hundred and thirty-nine thousand dollars. Excuse me, are you talking about in Holt? Just in Holt. Okay. What was that amount? Four. Is it's in the letter. Four million two hundred and thirty-nine dollars. Oh, I haven't opened it yet. We just got that. Okay. And uh, and fifty-nine dollars. I'm sorry, two hundred thirty-nine thousand. Anyway. So um, Holton has the total area is about 35 square miles. It's not, it's not super big. And there is, um, according to the last census number, 2,576 residents. So that amounts to $1,646 uh, of road money per resident without them contributing anything. And I just uh, and then also in the letter, Mr. Hulk explains that they can do their own work, but it has to meet their standards. And they tried it once, apparently, and it said it didn't work out. Um, so there's two sides to every story. And um, Mr. Jagger is mad. I understand that. And he thinks the road should be better. Uh, and I can't argue they probably should be better. But I mean, it isn't like no, nobody's put any money in that place. 
So anyway, that's that's just that was two comments. sides. <laughs> Any other comments from the board? None. Oh, I'm just, sorry. Well, I just want to add on to what he was just reading because I what I thought was the good news is that you know he did say that they are allowed to do that type of work that they have been saying that they couldn't do. So as long as they work collaboratively with the local commission, they can they can do their own funded and own standards. It just has to be up to those standards. So yeah, I thought that was good news because that was the question that was being asked. And yeah, so he thought you couldn't have. In the comments, seeing none, we're adjourned.